Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we're going to take a look at a really simple tip for kick drum courtesy of an engineer we've not talked about on the channel yet and that is Daryl Thorpe and I encourage you to check out Daryl Thorpe's credits. He's a really accomplished producer, mixer, engineer um, and this is a really simple tip for kind of beefing up your kick drum and making them a little bit snappier using two really simple tools. So the first thing I'd like to do is play the dry, raw kick drum part by itself. We've got three kick tracks leading into a bus channel here. We've got a kick in, kick out, and kick res track. Here's what they sound like. First of all, there's quite a bit of snare bleed in there. You can hear all those ghosted notes and full snare hits in the kick track. Not really worried about that right now. We could try to kind of pull them out if we wanted to, but in the context of the full kit mix, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. So one thing Daryl Thorpe does do is EQ on the way in with whatever console he's using. So you're going to hear that kick track be EQ'd as they're capturing it. Since this track wasn't sent to me like that, I did a little bit of EQ work first. Some simple EQ moves that probably would have been done at the recording stage, just rolling off the very lowest end, getting the littlest bit of the beater head click and cutting out the mud. Here it is with that EQ engaged. And without. Back in again. Just really tightens things up and really typical EQ moves here. But the two main tools that Daryl Thorpe uses come from Universal Audio. And the first one we've got is the Little Labs VOG, V-O-G, Voice of God analog bass resonance tool and it's basically a subharmonic synth here and if you don't have this tool you can use any subharmonic synth that you may have to kind of beef up the low end and daryl thorpe often will leave this on its stock settings and just get a big fat low end from that so here it is again without and with this tool in I'll bypass it on and off as it plays. You can hear how much it really fattens up the low end there. And of course, if it didn't fit your style of kick, you can adjust the amplitude, frequency, and all the different frequency selections down here. The next tool we're going to take a look at is also from UAD, but there are dozens of versions of this from other plugin developers, the SSL 4000 channel strip. And we're going to use it only for dynamics right now for the compressors. Let me put the compressor in. We're going to bring our ratio down to three to one. That's what Daryl Thorpe likes to do on kick drum. We're going to leave that release straight up at 0.4. And then we're going to just mess with the threshold until we get about three, maybe six dB of gain reduction. So for lighting up that first yellow LED, we're somewhere between three and six if that's happening. Now that does add a little bit of gain to it, so we're gonna bring down the fader. And the compressor really just has the effect of tightening up everything, tightening up the sound of that kick drum. So we did two things here. We used the Little Labs VOG to really just beef up that bottom end, got really big when we did that, then we tightened it up with the SSL. So let's go back to what our kick drum sounded like without both of these plugins engaged. And with the Daryl Thorpe processing with these two plugins. And back and forth without me talking in between, we'll start with it off. So there it is. Really simple tip courtesy of Daryl Thorpe. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.